PowerPoint is what's up? It's your favorite uncle, Uncle PJ, with another PowerPoint for today. And here it is. It says, God will use us to help and encourage others. You know, I remember the small phrase in the Bible that says, iron sharpens iron. I'm sure you heard your parents say it before. Guess what? When something goes wrong, guess what? The greatest equipment that we ever have in this world is the Bible, God's holy word. So guess what? We have to eat it all up. We have to read it. So guess what? When storms of life come, when those trials come, as simple as they may be, guess what? You may have a friend that is going through it. And guess what? That scripture comes to mind where you can share it so that that person can feel better and they feel encouraged that they can get through it. And vice versa when you go through that as well. Because guess what? Like this, the pledge to the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against God. That is what God wants for us. Once we stay equipped, God will do the rest. So, once again, it's your favorite uncle, Uncle PJ, with another PowerPoint for today. God bless you. Baptized like Jesus. Andrea was a boy with a dream. He dreamed about giving his heart to Jesus in baptism. But he didn't want to get baptized in a church. He had read in the Bible about how Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the Jordan River. Andrea dreamed about being baptized outdoors just like Jesus. He wanted to be baptized in the Adriatic Sea. But Andrea had never been to the sea. He lived in Serbia, which doesn't have a sea. The nearest sea was 300 miles, 500 kilometers, away in the country of Montenegro. Andrea longed to go to the Adriatic Sea in Montenegro. Andrea joined a group of children who were preparing for baptism. Andrea's younger brother, Luca, also was in the group, and Luca also liked the idea of being baptized in the sea. All the other children agreed that it would be wonderful to be baptized in the sea. They excitedly dreamed about being baptized together at a Pathfinder camp on the Adriatic Sea. But Andrea didn't know how he could afford the trip. Father was retired and didn't have money to help then Andrea learned that. He had to come up with two sums of money, a small sum to register for the Pathfinder camp now and a larger sum to pay for the camp later. He needed to pay the smaller sum quickly. He had nowhere to turn but to God. God, if this is your will, can you help, he prayed. The next day, two friends of Andrea's father stopped by the house. They said that they felt impressed to give some money to the family. It was enough to pay to register Andrea and Luca for the Pathfinder camp. Andrea couldn't believe it. God had answered his prayer so quickly. From that day, he knew that God would help him to get baptized in the sea. He read again and again in the Bible, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you, Isaiah 41 verse 13. The months passed swiftly, and soon it was getting close to the time to pay the second sum for the Pathfinder camp. Andrea didn't know what to do. Then father had an idea. Before retiring, he had sold Christian books as a literature evangelist. He offered to help. Andrea and Luca sell books at a Serbian resort town filled with tourists. The first day in the town was disappointing. Please, check out these books, Andrea called to people as they passed the table where he was selling books in a park. But the people looked away. That night, Andrea felt sad. He prayed to God, help us sell at least two books tomorrow. In the morning, as he was helping father and Luca place books on the table, an old man started looking at a book. What's in this book? The old man asked. This book is about the last days, Andrea said. The man bought the book. Andrea was so happy. God had helped him sell a book even before he started selling books for the day. After that, he found it easy to sell books. In two weeks, he and his brother had earned enough money to go to the camp. So, Andrea and Luca went to the Pathfinder camp on the Adriatic Sea in Montenegro. 
Both boys were baptized with their friends in the sea. As a special Bible verse to be read at his baptism, Andrea chose Isaiah 41 verse 13, which says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. Every time Andrea reads the verse today, he remembers that God fulfilled his dream of being baptized in the sea. I'm very thankful, he says. I'm really blessed. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help build a new Pathfinder camp on the Adriatic Sea in Montenegro. The current building used by the Pathfinders is nearly 90 years old and needs to be replaced with a new and larger building for Pathfinders. Thank you for planning a generous offering. Hello PowerPointers and welcome back to another episode of PowerPoint Sabbath School with Friends. This week's lesson is Lesson 3 and the title is God's Rescue Plan. Our power text is taken from 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 9 and 11. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Our PowerPoint is, God will use us to help and encourage others. Before we go on, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day that you've created. Thank you so much for all of our viewers, and we pray that this discussion goes well. In your mighty name we pray, amen. Now let us take a look at our Bible lesson at a glance. Noah and his family spared no effort in trying to convince the people to join them in obedience to God's word. Finally, they have no alternate, alternative but to enter the ark and leave the others to their own choices. It must have been a very difficult decision to make, and yet Noah understood that God had both a plan for salvation and a plan for destruction. The choice to be saved or destroyed is left in the individual, to, left to the individual. 
Noah chooses to encourage those around him, no matter what their choice. This is a lesson about community. God protected Noah and everyone in the ark. This community had put their trust in God, and God in turn blessed and protected them. We are living in a very similar time. Once again, we can experience the blessing and protection of God in our community when we place our trust in him. God works through people, and when we help and encourage others, we are part of his plan to offer rescue and safety. On the program today is my co-hostess, Marcia Bienami, and our regulars on the program, Nathaniel Adderley and Joshua Chana. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. So our first question is, think about all the people who did not choose to accept God's rescue plan in Noah's day. Imagine how many may not choose to accept Jesus today. How can you help others to accept Christ? Once again, think about all the people who did not choose to accept God's rescue plan in Noah's day. And imagine how many will not choose to accept Jesus today. How can you help others to accept Christ? I can start with everyone. One of the reasons why I believe that the people in they did not get in the heart is because they did not see how that affected them presently. They said, oh yeah, rain's gonna come. Rain that hasn't even appeared before. And you see me here, I'm partying, I'm having fun. How does that affect me now? How does that affect me in what I'm going to have? How, the, how does that give me a profit or a loss? But if you are able to relate to people to show, you see, you may be having this problem now, but if you see God that can take that away, just relating it to everyday life and the different things that are going on in their life, it can help them to have a better understanding of what you're asking. Thank you. I'll go next. In Second Peter 3, um, chapter 3 and 3, verse 3 and 4, it says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers or mockers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? But since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So, like, how in Noah's day there will be people who still will choose not to believe. And it will be inevitable. But uh, what I believe, how we can encourage others to uh, help others to come to Christ is by just doing what he said to us in his word. Like, we can also take inspiration from the commission he said to possibly before he went up into heaven, he told them to go into, go into all the world and preach. So if we just do what God commanded us to do, like um, Noah did, there still will be some people who will see that light within us and come to Christ. Because to be honest, as much as it hurts, there will be people who will not in the end don't come to Christ, but if we just keep on doing what God has commanded us, others will come to. I agree with all of your answers. I believe some ways that we can help others to accept Jesus is by, yes, by being relatable, like both you and Marcia met, both Joshua and Marcia mentioned, but I think also by debunking this lie that the devil constantly tries to tell us it's that God is that what you just said that you committed it's it's wrong yes and it's bad and God is not going to forgive you and it's just you might as well forget about it continue living in this life of sin or just like don't even bother to even go to God to ask for forgiveness because you're not going to get it he sells that lie to keep us in that chokehold in a way of sin and we have to remind persons that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. So that alone allows them, that gives them some type of hope that maybe there is hope for me to see eternal life and to be forgiven of my sins. And also, you know, by being an example to them and also by encouraging them to pray and read their Bible, introduce them to 
Bible studies in a way. So those different things can encourage them. But I feel like as Christians, we must be adamant to debunk that myth of that God is not going to forgive you. And this is just your life now. And we have to remember that it really isn't. And God is able to forgive us of those of our past. And he's able to look away from that. Our second question is, how are the troubles brought about by sin, like cloudy weather and the joys of knowing Jesus are like sunshine? Um, when I thought about this, I was thinking about how when it's cloudy weather, it's quite gloomy. And if you're like somebody with a contrite heart and you know that your sin is bad, it's be, it'll, it'll be quite um, gloomy, staying in your sin, and you'll just wonder what... Um, when the stage of your life you keep on falling into this sin or cycle is over like when it's cloudy weather you're waiting for the sunshine and when jesus comes and he is telling us come my child i can help you overcome these things when the sun comes uh, um, out it feels so relieving and feel like yes it just feels like a um burden is lifted so sin it kind of feel it, it does make you feel very gloomy and feel like this is never going to end but jesus he's like that ray of hope telling you yes you are struggling but i am gonna help you with this now not knowing jesus I'm basically saying the question here. It's like bad weather because, well, bad weather is something that you don't really like. And if you don't know who Jesus is, you're not going to really like your life a lot. You're not going to like a lot of things in the world if you don't like Jesus. So they like, oh, we don't like bad weather. Nonetheless, you're not going to like a lot of things if you don't know who Jesus or Christ is at all. But if we know Jesus, it gives us enjoyment in our lives. It gives us then the purpose and make us feel better. It makes us feel that someone cares for us and is watching for us. Bad weather, anything could happen right there. A lightning could strike us at any moment. But if you know God, you know you won't let that happen. You know we'll keep us safe. So, yeah. I really love that you gave that specific analogy as to think to being cloudy and not rainy, snowy, hail. I just want to explain that. When you have cloudy weather, what makes you know it's cloudy? Is it the wind that blows? Or is it that you notice that there isn't as much light because the clouds block the light? That's why we are partly cloudy and we have cloudy. Cloudy blocks the light mostly, if not complete. And then you say that God likes sunshine. So the cloudy weather blocks the sunshine. You know how like people say that if you do something bad, after a while, you don't feel bad anymore. Every single time you do something bad, like you're adding another cloud to that atmosphere to block away the sunshine. So while you are in sin, but we're all in sin. But while you sin, I'm not even going to say that. As we do things in life, we add another layer of cloud block the sunshine. I just want to give that analogy. Because if God is the sunshine that you love, you know, the sunshine at the beach, the thing that makes you happy, why add another cloud? Why add another layer to block the sunlight? I'm just going to leave you with that. Loved all of your answers. I think sin is like cloudy weather. In the same way you guys think of it, I think, like Joshua said, like the more you sin, I feel like the more cloudy it gets in a way. And we realize, I know sometimes we can see, but some sins, they're addictive or like you really cannot stop in a way unless you actually ask God, like you really plead with him to like stop and you're really you're convicted and you want to stop you desperately want to and I think the more it's almost like a slippery slope and it's like a t like it just go down and down and down 
unless you realize that really it's just a devil's coin to keep you down there. But um, it gets just darker and darker and it almost feels like you're, you can't escape it, but there is light at the end of the tunnel. So um, I, th I think of um, sin as this cloud, like you guys said, it's bad, it's gloomy, it's lonely down there. And doing sin sometimes, some sins, it feels like you're in the know and you're in the, the cool, like in a way, but really and truly it's not. And um, you're really alone and it's just not, it's not good. But with Jesus, it's like sunshine because it's like, all of that is like, it's like when it rains and the sun comes out and it dries up all the rain, it dries up all of the guilt, all of the shame. And Jesus is there to allow you to see all that you've been missing, all of the glorious sunshine and everything outside that you've been missing. And I see it as like, just basically the light, like which he is. So that's my view on it. Our third question is, Try to picture the animals going into the ark by themselves without God's help. How does this miracle reveal God's power over nature? And what does this picture tell about God's love and his desire to preserve a diverse animal life on earth? Go ahead, Nathaniel. It really shows how God cares about every single being because he said all the animals go in the ark. He didn't say like, Oh yeah, how about I just save this one animal? How about I just save uh I'll save all the cats. I'll let all the dogs die. So here's for every single living thing. And he said every animal that you know isn't aquatic go on the ark. And that shows them what she cares about it. I'll go next. Um but the animals going into the ark, I think. I must say that must have been a lot of confusion. And if they were going in by themselves, that means that God, God's influence, God's influence over them. Which would mean by that half of them would be eaten by them. If you put it in real, half, if not all of them, would be eaten by the time they reach back. So it shows God's power to control what they're the animal's desires were, especially since he was the one that gave them with those. It also shows that if all the animals were in, the fish would have wanted to go in as well. Like, the fish, like what about in the flood? The, all this wave, all this dreams, all the current, that, 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 that must be very scary. For the fish, that must be very scary. So they would want protection as well. And what, what in the world would they do? I'm pretty sure God has some protection. There's no way they would have survived. Wind, the wind, current. There's no way they can survive. So God must have put some protection for them as well. And to show how the orderliness, I don't even know what it was like. I'm not even going to say order. But what we do know is that two by two and seven by seven, it must have been organized enough to know that it's two by two. Oh my goodness, Joshua he literally took the words out of my mouth because, you know, with animals that are a lot of chaos and, you know, that's prey and predators. So it really shows God power because he, he like, like you said, he, um, like he stifled their desire because, um, I saw there will be a lot of prey and predator down there and there'll be like a whole feast to see all the, um, the animals in the food chain a predator can eat so it really shows god power that he can keep the animals in order in order for them to go in peacefully and be organized and um how it shows god's um love and desire to keep a diverse thing i found it really nice and merciful to god because unlike us animals i sure they don't have like a conscience our morality to know what's good and wrong and plus it's god creation so of course i think for the um the eight people no one has family that was left he want to preserve the rest of the creation that really didn't do anything wrong <laughs> agreed 
Um, I think this shows, yeah, it really shows God's immense power over nature and everything that happens. I feel like even the little bees, they are instructed in a, they're, they're made in a way to, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, he has control over every single little thing. It's like micromanaged to the very end. And I think that's some crazy power to have. And um, this just shows that, well, we even know the wind and the waves obey his voice. In creation, he spoke it and it became it, it came into existence. So that just shows even more how the lions who have so much power alone listen to God's voice. And like you guys mentioned, like they were together, predator and prey, and the lion and the lamb were together, and nobody attacked anybody. They didn't attack Noah. Everything was peaceful and calm, and they were all. It's like almost God gave all of the animals this instruction to listen and they all did as they were told and they went into the, 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 the ark and for however long they were there, they were obedient and they did everything that they had to do. It was just, it was, it was really planned out really well and I can see that there's nothing God cannot do. And this show, I, I see his love and his desire to preserve a diverse animal life on earth by the fact that he, like you guys mentioned, he saved the the little lizards, you know? And we might look at them as humans and say, oh, they're just so insignificant. Um, they're just lizards or they're just ants. But he saved them just so that they can be preserved, their life can be spared, and they can go on for generations and for so much more. We have some of those animals here today. So, I mean, a few of them may be extinct, but we have a lot of those animals here today. So they were preserved and he knew their, um, their function on earth, honestly, without animals, like, like nature, ecosystems, food chains, everything would be out of whack. So I see that he thought everything out, everything was well-planned. Go ahead, Nathaniel. I was gonna point out something funny. If God saved every animal, except for the aquatic ones, does that mean that no one, all those types of fleet was like bees and stuff, like bees buzzing around? And like imagine getting stung every day with millions of bees in the yard. Because he said every animal except the aquatic ones, bees aren't aquatic, and he had to save those. See, but that's my thing. That's what I'm thinking about now. I think those animals were on their best behavior the entire time. There was never an issue with them acting out. I don't think any bees stung them because the bees were, on, were first of all, they weren't on their run. And secondly, God made sure of it that there was no issue, I think. What were you going to say, Marcia? I was just going to say exactly what you were going to say. I think, I believe while they were on the boat, because, you know, God, he created the animals and, you know, their instincts and everything. So I believe he would keep them well behaved and they were being on their best behavior <laughs> i'm talking as if they're toddlers but they would have been in well behaved and not do anything crazy like being stung but i would have been fascinated because you know ants they braille their little holes and everything so just having those seeing the ants there and the bees and everybody just surviving all the prey and predator there it really just ho shows how God can like bring peace and unity. Cause if God didn't have the power, um, not God, not if God didn't have the power, but if He didn't command them to like, um, be behaved, there'll be like a whole chaos with prey eating paradox and the humans in the mix. So it really shows God. It's really just powerful, and it just baffles me. Cause we see how animals are now are they eating everybody. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been havoc, I think. And just the fact that, and I'm thinking, these animals, not all of these animals lived where Noah lived. Like, they were not always in in the same vicinity as Noah. I just don't know how, like, this is like a Siberian tiger being in the Bahamas, randomly, just here. That's weird. Like, it's, it's, it's crazy to think about. So, like, the fact that God brought all of these animals from all areas of the earth 
and they're just in this one area acting as if everything's okay sometimes like they probably may not have seen other animals like that around them and they're acting normal so it's like it's really i can't wrap my head around it I don't know. when i go to heaven i'm gonna ask a lot of questions because somebody had to answer um last question when has god shown great mercy to you or your family when was there a time god had shown great mercy to you or your family go ahead Nathaniel. I was a very big hurricane. I was very close to New Providence. And I was scared out of my wit because I heard so many people were dying by the minute. And I was looking on TV and these guys getting swept up by the flood. I was scared. I was shivering in my boots. But I'm so happy that my family was safe because I heard in Freeport. My aunt lived in Freeport. Luckily, she was uh, able to make it out alive. I'm happy that she's here with us today and that the Dorian did take her away because, oh my goodness, whoever was in Freeport, I don't know. I don't know what to say. A uh, time when God had shown me mercy. I think it's with, with our par my parents, to be honest, because oh, so I know I can be a lot sometimes. And with my mother, I feel that he just sends her like a calming spirit to deal with me and be patient with me because sometimes, sometimes I can't even deal with myself. <laughs> and I know I always say this, but as I read scriptures and especially the Psalms, I uh, I just see how God is merciful to me every single day. Like I can't even put myself in God's shoes because I would get super overwhelmed. But yeah, I believe God is merciful to me through my parents and my mother. Because I mean, I know I know I'm not that bad, but I'm still disappointed in some things that I do because I do have quite a temper and sometimes I'm prone to complaining. So, yeah. Agreed, Marcia and Nathaniel. Um, Nathaniel, I did think about Hurricane Dorian. See, those of you who did not know, that was a major hurricane that I think a good, about, a good amount of, I think some of the Caribbean experienced it, but the Bahamas experienced it probably the worst, maybe. Um, a lot of people died. But, and Marcia, same with the um, my mom thing. Oh, Lord, she's had to, it's a piece of work. I'm a piece of work, for real. But um, I see how God shows me mercy every day. But one time I can really put a finger on it was quite recently, and about March, um, my mom went on a school trip, and I was left here at home. Not at home, but I stayed some, some, with someone on this island. And the day that she was coming back, um, she was on her flight back home, and I was driving, to, we were driving to school and it was a rainy day and the car hydroplaned and so like water splashed up on the car and the car was spinning and spinning and spinning. And then we finally hit a lamp pole and it was a really bad accident, but I survived. And we all, everyone else in the accident survived. Everyone came out safely. Minor, nothing crazy, like minor bruises, scrapes, nothing crazy, but the way that I saw how that car literally right off, we couldn't, she couldn't drive anymore. It was, it was crazy to me because I see some people get in minor accidents and they die and they perish. And I'm, I'm grateful to God for just sparing both of our lives in that car. And it could have very well been the case where any of us could have died. So I'm very grateful for that. And I see how life is so fleeting and none of us deserve life. None of us deserve to wake up every morning to see a new day. None of us deserve to reach where we are safely. We just are, God shows mercy to us and his grace every single day. And no matter how much times we may sin or hurt him, it's, we're still granted life. We're still granted grace every single day. 
And I'm truly grateful because nobody has promised a new date. So I'm very grateful for that. And I see that God has shown me mercy along with my family because my mom could have been in that car, but it was just me and we both, we were fine. So I'm very grateful for that. That is all the questions today. I hope you guys enjoy, but it is the end PowerPointers. And before we close, we have a few more segments. We have to Kel Stacey Treat. We did not have her last week, but we're hoping to see her this week. We also have Pastor DJ with our 28 grades and lesson recap. And we will have our special feature. Last week, we did a special feature on Bahamian independence. So I cannot wait to see what we have next. And that is all. PowerPoint is also, we have 1,370 subscribers. Thank you guys so much for all your love and support. Thank you so very much. And if you have not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and share and like, please do so. Um, if you guys would like to contact us, you can contact us by emailing powerpointtimeschool at gmail.com or you can reach us on Instagram at PowerPoint Sabbath School. And please follow us on Instagram as well. I have not been saying that very often, but please follow us on Instagram at the handle PowerPoint Sabbath School. Um, that is all. But before we do close, can Joshua please pray for us? Let's just pray. Hey, Lord, we thank you for keeping us safe. We thank you for being with us. Thank you for helping us to in all that we do and say, Lord. Please continue to guide us as we go through this day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joshua, for that prayer. Once again, thank you, Paul Pointers, for staying to the very end of the discussion. Don't forget to stay for those other little clips at the end. Thank you, Joshua and Nathaniel, for joining Marcia on the program. Marcia and I on the program today. Please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Salvation is a personal experience. Hello, my pop party. This is Pastor DJ with What We Believe. Fundamental belief number 10 speaks of the experience of salvation. We believe as Seventh-day Adventists that when we allow Jesus into our heart, he changes our identity from sinner or from a sinner to a saint. From a sinner to a child of God. In other words, we are justified by Christ. We are reconciled. We are redeemed. We have been adopted into sonship. We are no longer the citizen of this world but the citizen of heaven. And so as citizen of heaven, we must live according to the Bible, according to the word of God, day by day. And so may the Holy Spirit help you and me so that we can walk every day like Christ. May God bless you and have yourself a wonderful Sabbath. God bless you.